What it do? Welcome to another new episode of Locked on Bucks. Listen, double overtime games are only thrilling when your team comes out with a dub. That was not the case for the Bucks tonight. They lose again to Le- the LeBronless Lakers, 128 to 124. I mean, what happened? We're going to talk about what went into the Bucks collapse as well as just, hey, how do you deal with the game like this? What do you take away from it? We'll talk about all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Camille Davis. You can catch me weekly on the Technical File Podcast and the Pack a Day Podcast. And you can also see me over on Cheesehead TV with the Carrie, the G, and MKE show during the NFL season. Joining me is Frank Madden, longtime voice of the pod and founder of BrewHoop.com. We do appreciate you tuning in, and we thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, as well as on YouTube. Like I mentioned in the open, it's double overtime heartbreaker for the Bucks. It's only thrilling when you win, and that was not the case for the Bucks. They led by as many as 19 throughout the game. I mean, with eight minutes to go pretty much in the game, Milwaukee was up 94-75 on the Lakers, but they lost that lead eventually um, and then lost the game in double overtime. Second time in the season, no LeBron. Ahead of this game, Frank, I got to be honest with you. When I saw there was no LeBron, I said, ah, LeBron out here ducking smoke. Then I realized, like, maybe LeBron said, I don't need, like, my guys got me. Like, you haven't been able to get that win without me already. So what do I need to prove here? But jokes aside, it is a disappointing loss for the Bucs, especially coming after such an impressive win against the Thunder. Yeah, I mean, you know, the the – Natural debate would be: Is this the worst Bucks loss of the season? And you know, depends if you're what you mean by worst, right? Like it's it's not the worst basketball they've played all year, right? I mean, you don't go to double overtime if it's your worst performance of the year. Um, you know, interestingly, the the advanced metrics on this game it gets warped because of the the extra overtime periods. But I think the Lakers had a 104 offensive rating and the Bucks like 100 offensive ratings. I mean, this was like a defensive you know, stalemate practically for all but, you know, whatever it was, 57 minutes of basketball. And it was really the offenses that were struggling. And it certainly felt like, obviously, to close the game, the Bucks, you know, just started throwing up bricks. Dame and Chris were were dueling bricklayers, missing shots. The ball wasn't finding Giannis. And then, um, especially in that second overtime period, finally, when Giannis does get some chances, you know, him and Bobby Portis, um, both looked like totally spooked by AD or in the paint mm-hmm. and they missed repeated shots around the basket. Giannis misses two free throws. Um, so again, I mean, you know, like you kind of like sink or swim with your best players and the Bucks' best players, you know, they didn't fold. Right. Um, you know, Dame hits the huge corner three that you thought maybe was going to be the shot that carried the Bucks to a win in the first overtime period. But, you know, at the end of the day, credit to the Lakers, you know, I mean, um, again, like the Bucks played great basketball for 40 minutes and then pretty much folded up shop to close the fourth quarter and honestly looked shell shocked. You know, I think they are a team obviously in crunch time has generally been really good. And that just wasn't the team we saw tonight. And we can kind of debate like what was going on between the years, but um, to me, that's what a large part of the story was. They just, again, came out intent, looking like they really wanted to give it to the Lakers and prove that that last loss was a fluke in L.A. And then they just took off, took their foot off the gas, and the Lakers obviously made plays, and they went out and earned the win. So, um, you know, plenty of blame to go around. I think you start with the big three. None of those guys really made plays in the overtime periods or obviously in that fourth quarter. And, you know, again, some, some big stat lines, especially from Giannis, 29, 21, 11 assists. I mean, historic kind of stat line type stuff, but at the end of the day, if you don't win a game like this, um, you know, none of that really matters. And um, at the end of the day, you know, Giannis has historically given it to AD, you know, repeatedly scored on him at will in these matchups over the last few years. But, um, certainly at the end of this game, AD had the upper hand and 
Um, again, it sucks. You don't want to say tip your cap to Lakers. I get people being frustrated with officiating. Um, but you know, sometimes bad stuff happens. And again, like it sucks coming two days after you have this great performance against the thunder. Cause it does feel reminiscent of beating the nuggets and then having the doors blown off against the heat and then looking like crap against the Grizzlies. Right. Like it's similar vibes in terms of just a team that, you know, plays down the competition plays up to the to the great teams and plays down to the bad teams and that's been their trait all season long mm -hmm. and this week they, they've been doing it again yeah absolutely have and i'm glad that you just said hey lakers played good down the stretch and they really did like for large part portions of the game i felt like the bucks were being the more physical team they were attacking and then in the second half you started seeing some of that slipping and i thought that really started with just how many offensive rebounds the mm -hmm. Lakers were able to get in the third and the fourth quarter because the Bucks were playing good defense. And then what happens? They miss the they miss the shot. The Bucks do not secure the rebound, and the Lakers get another opportunity at it. There were some possessions where they were getting three shots at it, and on the third shot, they normally would knock it down. It was just that they were they were hustling at the end of the game, and the Bucks were looking a little shell shocked, like you mentioned. We saw Austin Reeves explode. For a really big game, he had his own triple-double on the side for the Lakers because you look at the stat lines and you're like, okay, AD had 34 points on 31 shots. So you're like, it wasn't easy for him. It's just that when those shots started to fall for AD, they were happening when the Lakers were really making their run. I mean, we saw Hachimura have some big plays down the stretch. Spencer Dinwiddie, the one bucket that he made was this running pull-up three, and it's like you didn't make a shot the entire game, but now – now that's falling for you. So you're seeing that happen on the one side. On the other side, like you mentioned, you're seeing the Bucks miss bunnies just consistently. And I want to talk more about the big three in particular in the next segment. But I was just really shocked just seeing how drastically it felt like things were changing. Like you mentioned, it was just a lot of bricks going up for this Bucks team. And although there were some moments where it's like, hey, it's right here. The Bucks had it in their hand. It was there for them to be able to escape with the victory after a certain point in this game. I mean, we saw Malik Beasley go up vertical, big defensive play for the Bucks. Help again, knocking down some timely <laughs> shots when he could. But like rim protection, rim protection for Malik Beasley almost saved this game, Camille. I don't think almost, we'll ever say again, that again, but it was a great play. Yeah. The Bucks almost escaped with Malik Beasley going up vertically and contesting the shot against D'Angelo Russell. It was one of those types of games tonight. Um, but just down the stretch, it fell apart. And I kept looking like the story of runs in this game. Like the Lakers get the lead down to single digits, but the Bucks kept responding. It wasn't until that fourth quarter where it felt like momentum was really shifting. When Giannis got the two back-to-back -back turnovers, then a third one shortly thereafter, it felt like, I was like, just hold on at this point, Bucks. But they could not do that during or down the stretch. So let's talk a bit more about that because to your point, this Bucks team, as we all know, it's led by its big three. It, it goes as Giannis goes, as Dame goes, as Chris goes. And I feel like down the stretch, it just got a little sloppy. And I mean, Chris and Dame, the shots were broken throughout most of the game. So let's dig a little bit deeper into what we saw from their performances, how that affected the game coming up next. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From supercharges, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in the speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what it is that you're looking for. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you'll be burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers.
We truly do appreciate you tuning in to Locked on Bucks. Time is valuable. You can't get that back. So I appreciate you spending a good 30, 35 minutes with us every single day. A special shout out to the everydayers who tune in Monday through Friday, regardless of a win, regardless of a loss. We do appreciate that. Also want to tell you guys a little bit about Locked on Sports today. As you know, it is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel that is on YouTube and is programmed for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the extraness that can come and some sports commentary and analysis. So Locked on Sports today brings you can't miss analysis, opinion, and news. Check it out on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels at all part of the Locked on Bucks or Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, Frank. Let's talk big three. Uh, just fell apart in the clutch. Do we like, have to? Yeah, we got to, Frank. We got to do it. We got to do it. We got to do it. <laughs> We're here for the wins and for the losses. We got to do it. But let's let's just start here. So Giannis did start the game off well. You mentioned the AD Giannis matchup. That is always really fun to see. And earlier in the game, like Giannis was bullying AD at certain points in the game. He was 11 to 16 from the field heading into the fourth quarter. Went three and nine in the fourth quarter in the overtimes, and he finished one of six from the free throw line on the night as a whole. AD made it tough on him at times down the stretch. And then on, on top of that, Chris and Dane weren't able to generate enough points of their own. And we know with this Bucks team, Giannis, Dame, and Chris are the focal points of the offense, not just from a scoring perspective, but also from that playmaking perspective. Like those are the guys who are setting up other guys as well. And with Dame and Chris not able to get that many buckets to fall, it just was difficult. And it's crazy looking at it because it was a similar story in the Thunder game where Dame was 4 of 12, Chris was 5 of 11 for the game as a whole, but they both did play better in the second half compared to the first half in that Thunder game. Plus, the Bucks were able just to get a few more stops along the way. The Thunder went really cold for a stretch. And the free throw discrepancy wasn't as large, although – I know there are some fans who are pointing at the free throws as the reason the Bucks lost this game. I can't say like that's it for sure. It was a discrepancy, um, but I think that also comes with the Lakers playing a bit more physical down the stretch. But Bucks big three, a little disappointing in this one. Yeah, I mean, I think the extended minutes did not favor the Bucks in the sense that no. you know you've got Chris coming off a recent injury. He he has not played you know extended minutes like this. And, but to be clear as well, I mean, he was started, he was four out of 10 when he hit a three, that three that gave the Bucks back a 10 point lead in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. missed his last five shots, including a couple down the stretch. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's Chris's game, right? I mean, he's been the league's best mid range shooter this year by a pretty wide margin. You look at his percentages. Um, so, you know, that's a 57% shot most of the year for him. And he obviously missed those shots tonight and, just seemed like he was kind of short arming stuff. Um, and it kind of was what it was and him going 39 minutes. I mean, Hey, I guess it's good that they were comfortable with him playing that much. Um, mm -hmm. But he obviously struggled with his shot going four out of 15. And, you know, as you mentioned with Dame again, just that, I just didn't really have it, you know, and it's kind of the second straight game where his offense looked like it was, you know, a bit of a struggle, especially in the second half. Um, you know, I think in the first half he had what 13 or something like that um kind of seemed like he maybe was figuring something out a little bit but um you know again this kind of gets back to the question with dame right is you know kind of what version of dame can you expect to get night in and night out especially in a playoff series right like how many games is he going to give you where he looks like prime dame how many games is he going to look like he did tonight where he you know especially in the fourth quarter in overtime like there were a number of shots where he was really forcing it and you know again like you just can't he just couldn't have expected to make a lot of the shots that he was taking and a number of those were not like where he was trying to get, like looking like he was going to get fouled or something either he did have that one three shot foul that he drew on austin reeves but um just a, a lot of four shots and again like you got to keep it in perspective like this one guy was in my mentions tonight, like saying like, oh, like, they never run offense late. You know, and it's just like, guys, like, seriously, are we doing this? Like, they've got, you know, a three man action with Chris and Dame that has like a number of different options. Giannis setting a screen or going to the elbow. Like, this is this is their offense. Like, you don't think running 
Damianis pick and roll is offense. Like, mm-hmm. haven't we spent the entire year complaining about the lack of Damianis pick and roll? And now, like, because it doesn't work and they look really gassed, especially Giannis. You know, he looked gassed against the Nets the other night, looked obviously better against the Thunder and looked really kind of burst, full of burst and explosion for most of tonight. Had three blocks, a couple steals. Um, couple of really big dunks. I mean, Giannis looked physically good most of the night, but I think he was also super gassed down the stretch and, and in overtime. So again, they did stuff that they would normally do. And generally it's going to work a lot better than, than it did tonight. It's gonna fall. Um, and yeah, I'm, I mean, credit to the Lakers again, like what AD did around the basket in particular, I think was super impressive, especially in the overtime, you know, blocking Dame on that last uh, layup attempt um, to end the first overtime when they had Bucks had a chance to win. I mean, Bucks had their chances, you know I mean? It's not like the Bucks yep. didn't have their chances. Um, I think what we saw though, like, I think kind of like the concerning things I think are, you know, Dame, we've seen this, especially late in games, uh, in the first Boston game, uh, in Boston, you know, in, uh, in the last game in Boston, when he drives late in games, he tends not to score, you know, he you had to contact. play. Well, I mean, just, he just can't, he just can't get, I think, pass guys enough. And then if they can get a contest, you know, he just doesn't, doesn't have the ability to seemingly to score in traffic around the basket, right? Like think of the shot he missed. um, I think with the Bucks up one in that game in LA, he had that drive going to his left where that he wasn't able to finish as well. Uh, And we saw it again tonight, you know, just in crunch time, he's not able to get to the rim and, and finish as consistently as you like. He did have that steal and dunk. Um, that kind of broke the lid off uh, scoring. And I think it was the second overtime when neither team looked like they had any juice left or unable to score. But, um, you know, it just seemed like Dame in crunch time. He's either going to score with, you know, a a long two or a three point jump shot, or he's not scoring at all. Um, So I think that's something to kind of monitor, right? Um, In terms of Dame's ability to get to the rim, especially when things matter most, obviously, you know, Giannis tonight, everything was in the back in the paint. You know, he, he had that play where he, I think got blocked by AD and then had to settle for kind of a, an improvised little Dirk step back, which he's shown he can make, but you know, just look frazzled, short armed it in the second overtime. And, you know, as we said, Chris obviously was struggling and really not even looking for a shot in the overtime period. So um, yeah, they sucked by their standards, you know? <laughs> especially when the game was, kind of um you know when it kind of all things when things kind of came down to to it but um yeah i mean i I don't expect them to normally look this bad and i think they should be running more or less the same plays that they did um you know like the the chris alley-oop to Giannis at the end of regulation yeah we've seen them connect on that a lot of times my only complaint with that is kind of exactly what happened in that if it's a bad pass, it goes out of bounds, then suddenly, you know, you're giving the Lakers a chance to to hit a game winning shot, which, you know, if you just pass it to Dame or something like that, you're probably going to have a lower chance of scoring. But, you know, nobody's going to get a a second shot at it. Um, So, again, like AD fouled him, you know, like pretty clearly held him when he was going to the basket. What are you going to do about it? You know, like we can say the ref screwed them, but again, like in those situations, like the refs are not looking to call, you know, a, like a foul on a play like that. And of course the Lakers always seem to get away with those, right? Like they have by far the biggest free throw differential in the league over the past year. But again, I'm not going to let the bucks off the hook and say like, this is the ref's fault that the bucks lost. You were up 19 with eight minutes to go in the game. Yep. Like yep. do your freaking job and close that game out. And it's that simple. Yeah, that's why I can't go there with the free throws either. Like, you look at the discrepancy, and you're like, oh, wow, the Lakers got 32, the Bucks had 17. You're like, wow, like, okay. But again, the Bucks were up 19, eight minutes to go. They had opportunities at the end of the fourth, over both overtime periods. They had the opportunities. They just did not, uh, they didn't, they didn't do anything with it, unfortunately. But there were some good actions that you saw in the game tonight. Like, there was a play, I think it was in the first quarter, where uh, Giannis initiated the offense. He was looking to get like a dribble handoff with Dane, but it got denied. So he passed it real quick to Brooke in the corner, who got it right back to Giannis, who then got it to to Dane. And then you had uh, him rolling, he kicked back the bees. It's an open three. Like it looked really good seeing them work on some of the secondary actions of, okay, 
Dame's being denied. How do we get offense going? And you saw the Bucks get a lot of assists tonight on just the evening, like 37 assists on 49 made shots. You look at that and you're like, that's that's pretty good. But I'd argue that at points down the stretch, they could have been moving the ball even more. Um, it felt like the same thing that you hear with this Bucks team during most losses, where it's like when the offense stalls, normally it's because the ball starts sticking a little bit more than normal. And with this Bucks team having the talent. That's what that that's what Doc have, said. Did he? That, I didn't catch Doc's, the whole game. Yeah. Yeah, Doc's comments post game were exactly kind of. I, I was I was wondering if you were going to go there, Camille, because you heard him say that. But yeah, he said something like there are too many one shot possessions down the stretch, which is interesting in a game where you have a crap load of assists. Yeah, but, you know, I think he saw what what you're referring to, like Dame pick and roll, off balance three. You know, again, when it goes in, it's Dame time. When it doesn't, then it's bad offense. And that's the thing because the Bucks have so much talent. So like when you have a Dame, a Giannis, and a Chris, these are guys who feel like every possession down, I can probably get my own shot off the ISO if I really want to. So it's combating that aspect of it with like also let's make sure that we're running our offense the way it should be ran. But say la vie, it's it's a it's a bad <laughs> loss for the Bucks tonight. Which brings me to my next question for you: Which what do you do with a game like this? We're nearing the end of the season. The Bucks had a big lead heading into the, you know, into the fourth. They were able to push their lead up even more during the fourth quarter, and they smoked it. They smoked it. So it was like, how do you react to a game like this? And I want your answer when we come back right after this. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire Stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sport brands, all for free. That includes us at Locked On. You just heard me mention it about 15 minutes ago or so, and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive in to all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports. I mean, March Madness, NBA, MLB is coming back, so much more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Make sure you check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Got to trust me on that one. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on from almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder, which has room for up to eight, an expansive cargo capability, and advanced available 4x4 capabilities as well. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, Frank, you've had a little time to think about it. When you have a game like this, disappointing double overtime loss. Again, it's only thrilling when your team wins it. But even if the Bucs would have pulled this one out, it would have been more of an escape than anything else in this particular game. But what do you do with a game like this? Do you look at it as just one game down the stretch? It's a, it's a stinker. You toss it. Or do you think it's something deeper and more concerning that should lead to really questioning what this team can do down the stretch in the playoffs? I mean, like I, I've been, I mean, I never tweet that much, but, um, you know, like a couple of things I've tweeted the last couple of days is like, you know, go back to like first principles, right? Like one thing I kind of brought up is, and it's been the story all season, like best argument for the Bucks, 
being a title contender is when their best players on the floor, they're really, really good, right? Damianis Chris came in this game, plus 18 net rating. It's the best rating of any trio in the league that have played more than 600 minutes. Um, the starting lineup has the best net rating of any starting group um, or any start, any five-man group in the league that's played like a reasonable number of minutes as well. So when the Bucks play their best players, they're really good. And they've been as good as any, any group in the league so far this year. So again, you still have that. Like one game does not change that, right? Um, mm-hmm. I think the other kind of consistent thing is the Bucks have the best net rating against top 10 teams in the league this year. That flipped on Sunday when they beat the Thunder. It's not going to change tonight because the Lakers are not one of the top 10 teams in the league. And therein lies the problem. The reason the Bucks are not <laughs> the best team in the league is because they do not handle their business against the middle of the pack. They do not handle their mm-hmm. business against the lesser teams the way that a team like Boston has, right? The Celtics have just absolutely, you know, taken bad teams and stuffed them in the locker. Maybe not the Hawks the other night, but whatever, right? Um, and and a number of other teams too. The Knicks, I think, have like maybe two losses or something like that against sub 500 teams. Like they've been a buzzsaw against bad teams all year too. And so if you're the Bucks, you know, you're looking at the standings and what are the Knicks? Like two losses back now, I think, um, in the standings, right? Like, you might say like, oh, Bucks are kind of comfortable in the two seed, like Cavs are fading. Well, I mean, if you keep pulling crap like this, then you're going to give those teams at least a chance, especially I think the Knicks more so than the Cavs probably. And so I think, you know, what do you take from it? Again, I, I, I don't think the offense is bad as it was late in the game and, and in overtime. I don't think there's anything you look at this and say like, well, you should have done something like fundamentally different or, you know, Mm -hmm. you cannot play these guys together or you, you can't play Chris and, and Dame and run Dame Giannis pick and roll or something like that. Right. Like, no, Um, I think the D on the defensive end, right. We talked about the defense actually like was the defensive numbers were actually very good tonight overall. Um, But I think you can certainly look at the defense, especially in overtime, you know, overall both teams struggled to score. But, you know, we saw it like Chris when he was matched up against Austin Reeves um, got blown by a couple times. Um, you know, you had Bobby out there for a period who didn't do anything offensively. And obviously he's not really doing much defensively. Um, and, you know, when the when the Lakers needed buckets, you know, they were able to get, for the most part, draw fouls um, or they were able to get spots and, and hit shots. There was a miscommunication on that. Austin Reeves, go ahead, three where they blew a switch Mm -hmm. because switches are hard, you know? Um, So again, like I I think defensively, like, you know, when you're one through three guys are Dame Malik Beasley and Chris, um, you're not going to be able to just like be like a lockdown defensive team. Right. I mean, you're going to rely heavily on Giannis and Brooke when he's in the game to clean up misses. You're going to have to be, you know, on point in terms of switching and communicating, they did that extremely well against the Thunder, but you know, Damon and, and and Bees and Chris, like there's gonna be certainly matchups where those guys are gonna get beat. And fortunately, D'Angelo Russell wasn't, you know, a laser show tonight, but yeah. still ended up 29 points on 22 shots. Pretty good in the grand scheme of the, of the universe. Um, so it it kind of, you know, I think it, it does sort of highlight like at the highest levels, the Bucks defense in crunch time is going to have certainly weak points that you can attack. I personally, I, I was going to ask you like w- what you thought the best lineup combination was for the Bucks to go to in crunch time. Um, I think Crowder was kind of the most obvious guy to go to just because of the switchability factor and the floor stretching factor. Um, he's obviously been shooting the ball well, um, you know, these past, these past couple weeks. And again, just defensively, I just trust him a lot more than, than Bobby. And I think from just a matchup perspective, you know, Brooke, um, again, like you don't have the switchability factor. It just kind of can complicate, com- complicate things late in game, especially against a team that is playing relatively smaller as the Lakers were. Yeah. And with that, like this was a time where I thought that the Giannis at the five lineup might have come into play, given the fact that they were really just running out AD as their singular big man tonight. But Again, we're seeing Bobby and Giannis sharing the court with Bobby taking the the five-man responsibilities for the most part. I think Jay Crowder definitely did deserve a few more minutes, only 18 minutes on the night for Jay Crowder in a game where he was coming up pretty big defensively. I will give Bobby credit. He had 18 and 13 tonight. 
He single-handedly outscored the Lakers bench by himself. He was putting up buckets. Appreciate that. But down the stretch for the defensive, I probably would have yeah. <laughs> I probably would have went uh, Dame B's mid Jay and Giannis to close down the stretch just to have that switchability in there. Like you mentioned, um, we did see some AJ green minutes early on in the game. He wasn't somebody who in the crunch time, I'm like, yeah, we need, we need AJ out there, but uh, without Pat Bev in the lineup, you did see AJ green get some time, but I thought that Jay Crowder is somebody who could have definitely played more minutes of the guys who played big minutes, nine man rotation tonight. Uh, Jay was second least in minutes, just be, or just ahead of AJ Green, who played 12. Um, you go a, Jay Crowder with 18, and then you see that Pat Conton had 22. Pat Conton had nine assists on the night. Like it was, it was some weird, <laughs> some weird things happening, um, in this game. Like the shots weren't falling for PC, but he was moving the ball really well. Defensively, there were times where he was just getting blown by or being targeted defensively as well. Um, it just wasn't overall great game for him, but he found a way to impact the game down the stretch. But similar to you, um, after a game like this, it's one of the ones where you're like, okay, well, what went wrong? And I looked at the Thunder game directly. I mentioned it earlier because it, that was a game, too, where you saw Dame and Chris not shoot as well, but you saw the Bucks able to find a way to win. It's like, what was so different? between these two games. And again, it's just execution down the stretch um, in this particular game where the Bucks faltered. And to your point about the Bucks record against teams uh, with winning records, that's what makes gives me the confidence going into the playoffs where it's like, okay, come playoffs, we understand what the competition level is going to be. There should be no playing down to any competition because this is it. This is what you spent the whole season trying to get to at this point. So you take it. You you take it. It was Bucks fans, you know, clowning the Celtics for blowing thirty point lead to the Hawks. Now you just blew a twelve or nineteen point lead to the Lakers, and you take you just eat that. Like you eat that, and you bounce back. You look to bounce back um, on Thursday against the Pelicans. Which uh, hey, another team that's playing for a lot. The Lakers came into game. this game. Yeah, <laughs> the Lakers came into this game needing a win because of the way that the the race in the West is going. And the Pelicans are going to also be coming out looking to secure that win because they are only two games up at this moment over the six and seven seed. And they do not want to fall into that play in tournament. So it's not going to be easy on Thursday, but it's a game where you're looking for the Bucks to respond and bounce back in. So that's how I, I look at it for the most part here. But hey, guys, Bucks lost. 128, 124, double overtime, a disappointing loss. You take that, you look to see what you can improve on, and you go move forward from that. Hopefully, when we come back for the next post game show after Pelicans, we're talking about a Bucks win heading into the weekend. But until then, there'll be locked on Bucks content in between time, previewing the matchup, and of course, talking more about this loss uh, today. But for Frank and myself, we'll catch you later. Everybody, take care.